we got a box. Is that it? I am so incredibly hyped for this package. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, we have the Republic Fighter Tank. So yes, guys, today we have the LEGO Star Wars 2022 Clone Wars Republic Fighter Tank. Coming out at $40 with six minifigures at 75342. An absolutely amazing set with our first ever purple clone troopers and one of the first reviews on YouTube. Now with that said, if you want more great early access reviews and stuff like this, remember to hit that subscribe button with that notification bell to stay updated on all of my latest LEGO Star Wars reviews. Also we're going to have chapters all down below so if you want to skip to a certain section skip around learn about all of the set and we're gonna get right on into it now first up here is the box art it does look to be taking place on a planet like Ryloth or Pasana we're not entirely sure obviously we have a great look at the tank and all the characters we also have the new Clone Wars design this is our first Clone Wars set with this new box art design and there you have our 332 32nd trooper as well as many detailed statistics on the set and the names of all of the minifigures. Now, moving around the box, you do have a look at the back. Again, another sandy atmosphere. You get lots of this stuff, lots of details on the features. You also do get push tabs on these. They are subject to change depending on the area that this one is manufactured. And then also on the side box art, you get basic Lego stats. And one of my favorite things, you'll see this in every review, I absolutely love all of the modern side box art. And then of course, you also have your comparison for the real scale minifigure on the box. Now, once opening the box, you do stick a razor here so you don't have to use the push tabs. And then you can basically just pull this open and unbox, you get all of your bricks. I believe you get one, two bags, uh, two one bags, and then you also do get the instruction manual. Also, now that we have it unboxed, here are the instructions. Uh, they're a little out of proportion. This probably should have been moved down a little bit. But other than that, they're very simplistic. And I'm sure what many of you are asking, what is the figure down here? It is Mace Windu. I think it should have been a clone. Very explanatory. Very self, you know, sir. It knows what it's doing. You also do here have all of the sets. There is nothing new. But they do have him added there, which is, I guess, a new addition, which is quite cool. And then you get the regular back of the instruction manual. Now with that said, we are going to get into my hyperlapse, so I will leave a chapter bit if you want to skip straight to the review section, or if you just want to sit back and watch me build this beautiful set. So here we have a look at the legend himself, Mace Windu. Very cool looking. I believe the torso is obviously different from the one, say, in the UCS gunship. It is not all scuffed up. You do get his purple lightsaber, which is very neat. And the most unique thing, obviously, about this minifigure, making it the best Mace Windu ever, in my opinion. Uh, you could turn him around. He does have his Clone Wars armor. Right there, you can see he has the little Jedi symbol, uh, which is very cool. That is obviously clone armor. Honestly, I'd like to see some people put this on clone troopers. I think that would look pretty cool. And then on the other side, you also do get him with his little keypad, which is really cool. You get some basic back printing. It looks very nice. And then you also flip him around. He gets an angry look because obviously he's bald, so they can't put in a second face print. But overall, a very solid minifigure. Next up, we do have the B1 battle droids that do come in the metallic gray uh, blaster variant, I guess. This is a little different than the ones in the Final Force Battle Pack for that reason and that reason alone, although these guys have obviously been around forever. Next up here is our 187th Legion Clone Trooper Commander. Uh, I just like the 
consider him as an airborne trooper. Uh, obviously, he was originally released as a commander in the Hasbro toy line, which is very cool. He does come with the DC-15. Uh, these are the long-range carbines. Very cool. Same one that we've gotten in File First Battle Packs and plenty other sets. Uh, now, he is a really neat figure. They did print on his waist cape, that's specifically so he could sit in the vehicle, that is why they usually do that. As opposed to say the 2020 Airborne Trooper who did get a cloth, uh, that is because he was not sitting in the vehicle. Either way, this guy's very cool. He does come with the standard Clone Trooper minifigure head. You could twist him around and he does get some absolutely beautiful back printing. He's again, a little wobbly. He does have the strap, very consistent with again, say this one, although it is a little more Clone Warsified than that one, it's not scuffed up, it is very shiny. This is the first time we've gotten a non-scuffed up Air Warren Trooper, especially in the helmet region, uh, which is quite nice in my opinion. And you know, just comparing him uh, to this guy is really quite neat looking. Now, here are the two brand new clone troopers. These are the 187th clone troopers. Obviously, very cool, setting a precedent, say, for a new shock trooper type design, which is very neat. You can move up his helmet. They both come with the same standard heads. You can also flip them around. They have some basic back printing, basically the same as the airborne trooper. And I know a lot of people are wondering what they would look like with purple arms. So here's a little demonstration. I will admit as a clone enthusiast, this actually looks pretty good. I think it looks better than say the white arms. I'd be curious to hear what you guys think. Do you guys think the white arms look better or the purple arms? I'm kind of indifferent. I think they both look all right, but you know, the purple arms kind of have to reign supreme just because they look better. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, we do have a look at the Republic fighter tank. And as you know, my opinions have changed on it since my initial reaction to it. Uh, so we're going to start off by taking a look at the set. Now from a head on angle, this thing you could tell is very, very flat. Uh, you know, it just kind of looks weird. You do see these little arms that are holding this particular piece. Uh, and you know, just an overall form of it, it looks very flat, which is something I find interesting. You will notice up front, we do have a lot of stickering, uh, just nice details, you know, covering the tank. You do have the Republic logo. These are all stickers. This set is very sticker heavy. One of the things I'm probably more critical of about this particular set, there was no real printing. You get this, like little the side design, uh, sub turrets. You also do get over here a little bit of a box shape, which ironically, this is where the stickers were in the last set. Now, looking at the side, you do get two great turrets on each side. They can move up and down. The only problem is these stick out a lot and they look very, very bulky. Uh, now, say you want to take out a battle droid. All you have to do is set your sights down, push it, and it takes it out. Now, as for the front, you do get a very stickered area. And the problem I have with this is this piece particularly pops out a lot, probably more than it should for it to be, you know, officially accurate. There is no canon version actually where it looks like this all popped out. And again, the biggest problem I have with the set is the use of this brick right here. Really, it should have been a little thicker around this area. Either way, you can open that up and there is room for some stuff. Not only for a clone trooper, you can fit other stuff back there. If you want to say fit a B1 battle droid and you could store them back there, you probably actually store two back there or anything. You could store crates, weapons, all of that stuff. You can also store your clone trooper, of course, and then you can close it all up and you have zero problems. Another great area is here. They do use sword pieces to, you know, represent antenna. You also do have a little area where you can lift this up from the back, which we will take a look at. And there is an area where if you want, you could say have Mace Windu command. This is probably where he would be around. Uh, one thing I wish they did have was a little bar for him to pop up more than he currently is, because he does feel relatively small compared to, you know, if he was to say pop up like here or in this general height. That's just an opinion though. You also do have a little control panel. A minor complaint I would have is the fact that you cannot sit down your trooper and close it down. That is just not a thing it allows for, uh, which is mildly disappointing. Now, I'm sure you're all wondering what is going on down here. Now, first off, I will note there are these little red lights down there. I believe they're supposed to represent floodlights of some sort, possibly. I'm not entirely sure, but they do represent some sort of lights. They wouldn't have just put a random red color there. You also do move this particular piece down. This is the door that doubles as a ramp. So if you want to, say, have troopers run out the back and make it look like they're escaping or if they are trying to, you know, get out and fight, they could do that, evacuate, whatever you want. There's also, again, more room back here. There is actually a little stud hopper plate, specifically one of those CMF plates. 
Now you can actually store an extra trooper in here, which is great for minifigure space. Uh, and you know, I just really like that. You will also notice there's a very basic bottom structure. It is very flat, very non-technic inducing. There's not a lot of specialty parts in the set, but there are wheels, which is nice if you want to roll around your set. It makes it just so much easier and I really like that. One more minor problem that is not unique to this set, but is a problem in LEGO Star Wars. They continue to put these antennas on sets, which are super easy to knock over. It takes not a lot to get them off. And quite honestly, I hope they fix this soon. This is just something I'm not really happy about. Uh, but it is a unfortunate thing that they've been doing for years. And here are the two sets compared. They are very similar sets, relatively speaking. Uh, but you would tell the certain size difference between the both of them. Uh, and this one clearly looks much, much bigger. Uh, and if you want to move it on the side, you do this. We're going to be having a full comparison video out very soon. Now, while it may be obscure, the figure selection for this set is absolutely insane. I think they really nailed it. The main reaction from a lot of people with set was who asked. And, and technically they're right and realistically they should have done the more maroon colored Mace Windu Legion clone troopers from the Clone Wars Season 7. Uh, but you know these I'd argue are actually cooler minifigures seeing as they are just really more highlighted. Obviously a lot of the memes going around are that they are lean troopers uh, because they are purple which is kind of funny. And again, purple is just a great color. Mace's lightsaber is purple. And you know, these designs also set a precedent for them to make brand new shock troopers. If they want to now, since they're doing non-canon minifigures, they could do 440 second troopers, which are the green versions of these guys, which by the way, light green compared to these, that would look sick. Also, this Mace Windu is fantastic. One of the best minifigures I have just ever seen in regards to anything. Uh, the arm printing is great. You know, this is our first really, really great Mace Windu that really stands out, especially, again, because of that arm printing, putting the one that came in the $350 UCS gunship to shame. Now, the build is still kind of a mixed bag for me. I feel like there's a lot of debate on it, and I haven't exactly made a full-on decision on what I like about it. You know, the original 2009 one was loved for being big, but it's often credited as being inaccurate because it's not that big. Uh, and, you know, the old Republic fighter tank was criticized as being small, but there was no official canon design for this particular vehicle until, I believe, 2018 with its appearance in Battlefront, at least. And I actually believe that was 2019 when it came out. So this is still, again, relatively new to the Star Wars canon. Uh, now, in terms of what's actually more accurate to the Star Wars canon, it's going to be this set. This set is still more accurate. It is much smaller, uh, as it is in Battlefront. This set is not as accurate to the official canon, with its only appearance, again, being in Battlefront, and of which all designs are canon to Star Wars. Lego Rogue on Instagram actually made a bit of a comparison between all three of them, and I thought it was really well done just comparing that this is kind of a really in-between set, in between the small 2016 one and the large 2009 one. And a few minor complaints, again, the stickering is just kind of the worst, uh, and you know, just the rotating cannons, they are just way too big. And again, the set just kind of looks a little dopey. But beyond that, is this worth the $40 price? Absolutely. Uh, now, a reason I think I'll justify a lot of people have been saying they're adding more minifigures into these types of sets. Now, hopefully they're consistent and they put lots more figures in lots of sets like this. Uh, they need to keep this up. Uh, if not, this is going to certainly seem like it's just basically trying to upstage, say, the 501st Battle Pack. With that being said... It completely destroys the AAT, which now seems pretty much valueless. It comes with two less clone troopers, and it's literally the same value, uh, Jedi droids and all. And it just kind of seems like almost, a, you know, borderline, you know, just rip off. Now, honestly, I'm going to give this set a 9 out of 10. For the set's faults, it certainly makes up for it in the figure selection and overall value at 40 United States dollars. Uh, you know, it's just an interesting set. It's really quite cool. Now, I think the reason a lot of people were really disappointed when they first saw this is because it seems like LEGO has been almost intentionally botching prequel sets. Uh, and that is just an expectation we've had almost, so we were ready to be disappointed by this set. 
and it's actually come around. I think it looks relatively good. It works very well. It does its job, other than obviously glaring stuff. Every Lego set has some sort of problem for the most part. Uh, this one just happens to be out of proportion in some areas and just probably a little more under detailed than it could be. But other than that, it's a very solid deal, especially for a whopping six minifigures. Now, is this a better value than the 501st Battle Pack? Eh, no, I don't think so. I think that set still overall has a better value. It has more army buildable characters. Uh, I also think, you know, generally speaking, uh, it's less sticker oriented. The builds, I think, are probably a little bit better. Uh, and I just like it as a set more, especially when it's on sale for $24. It is a steal. This one's probably going to go down to 32, which is why I am going to be leaving a link to the Amazon affiliate page for one this list so that way you guys can come here and make sure you get a link to buy it. Either way, with that said, I hope you guys all enjoyed this comprehensive look and review at the Republic Fighter Tank. This is my first time getting out a seriously early review, a month before it's released. Uh, but either way, I'll see you all in the next one. Remember, peace out and stay awesome.